Hello, so here we are for um, another session and uh, last time I glassed over the forward section with two sheets of fiberglass and then three coats of epoxy with approximately four hours between each coat to let it go tacky so that um, it would make a good um, bond between the two layers. So this is the first time I've been back to look at it and uh, it looks pretty good. I'm actually pretty pleased with that. I was a bit worried that the the last two coats might not be thick enough and um, the surface is just a little bit dimpled but I can't particularly see any hollows. It's just kind of slightly ripply. So um, I think that's pretty good, pretty well filled. It's, it feels pretty smooth to the touch. It doesn't feel really rough. Um, there are some places where the tape that was previously there is kind of feels a bit rough through. So that, that section there where that piece of tape joins there is good. But this bit here, oh, this is, ah, oh, that's what that is. This is where the two edges overlapped. So this was the first side that went on. And the second side that went on, this is where the, the join is from that second piece. So yeah, that's obviously gonna to need to be sanded down. Um, and also I've got these edges to deal with um, all around here. And then I'm going to need to re-drill the holes um, for the nesting bulkhead so they can join together. So that's the first job today, is um, look at getting this trimmed down, re-drilling those holes. Then I'm going to try and join the two halves together, um, look if there's any more sanding needed on the aft section before that one gets glassed over. Um, but before I do that, I want to get the two sections joined together and I want to get the keel scribed. So that means basically um, laying the keel so <laughs> so this piece of wood you see here um, is the keel and so what I need to do is join the two pieces together and put that onto the aft section and then the plan is to pop a piece of wood under the aft end, not here obviously, it will be on the uh, aft section, so that it's raised up slightly, and then I'll draw from there at that height all the way along like this, maintaining that height, and that will create a curve, which is equivalent to the curve of the hull. Uh, and then I need to cut that curve out of this piece, and that means that this piece will then sit down onto the hull, and it'll be quite shallow here, it'll only be half the height of that in the center area, yeah, I will need to shape that front part. So, once I've got the two halves together, I'm gonna to do the keel. <clears throat> once I've got the keel and cut the keel, cut the keel in half, I can then attach the forward part of the keel to the front section. So I'm gonna do that by first drilling down through this front section, through the center line, three or four places. Um, then I'm gonna put the keel on top of that and tape it in place. And then I'm gonna go underneath and drill into the keel. Um, just with pilot holes. Then I'm going to screw that in with four, five, whatever um, stainless, steel, stainless steel screws. And once that's then in position, I can then look at putting the daggerboard case in place. Um, and to do that, I need to screw that to the nesting bulkhead uh, and then draw around it and then drill pilot holes so I can see where the corners are. And once I'm happy that the corners of that are away from the keel, still leaving me place to put a fillet on as well, then I can cut out the daggerboard hole. So that's probably going to be um, on this side here, um, a hole for the daggerboard. And if I can get all that done today and or tomorrow, then I'm going to be quite happy. I'm going to save the glassing of the aft section until next week um, when I'm going to be here for a bit longer. Okay, let's get on with it. So here I am, just doing a bit of sanding down, trimming those edges on the nesting bulkhead, getting rid of that little edge on the centre line, redrilling the holes so that I can actually join the two pieces back together again, getting it, getting the dinghy joined together, back up on the stands, flip it over, and then get the keel, and uh, obviously the instructions. And I've reread those three, four, five times just to make sure I'm doing this right. Okay, so I've just scribed the keel. Um, it's probably not very accurate. 
uh, it's a bit rough and ready um, but then again it's not meant to be perfect so uh, hopefully this will do the job so what I did was I I laid the keel as you can see here I laid the keel down the center line of the boat <coughs> the boat's bolted together upside down and it stands and the keel sits on a block so I cut a block that was 22 millimeters high I've stuck the block to a fairly flat part of the um, aft end of the hull on the center line and then I've rested the keel on top of it and then taped that down so that it can't lift up and then to try and stop the keel from moving around I've put a piece of um, sticky tape down here double sided so it kind of sticks to the hull it kind of works a little bit and then at the front I've hung a weight on which happens to be my drill <laughs> I've hung a weight on it just to kind of hold it and keep it in place and then I've cut another block 22 millimeters high and I've taped the pencil to it and then basically what I do is I just put the pencil here and basically at the aft end um, that's exactly 22 millimeters high so the pencil will make no mark and then eventually it gets to about here and it starts making a mark and as I draw this line along following the shape of the hull the the idea is that by cutting along this line now, when this gets glued to the hull, um, the keel will actually be, in theory, flat and it will run flat along the length of the boat. So the most part gets cut out here in the centre and as we go forward it uh, starts to go back down to zero. So this should give me a piece now of wood that will fit the curvature of the hull and sit um, it'll sit the full height at the stern which is 40 millimeters um, and then at some point about here it'll only be 18 millimeters deep because I'm going to cut 22 millimeters out because that is the kind of point where it touches so that's scribing the keel so the next stage is to do the cutting so uh, on we go okay well the instructions for Cutting the keel are a little bit difficult to understand, but I think I've got it now. So here's my keel, ready to cut. And I've scribed the line to the shape of a hole. So that starts about here, and that kind of comes in a bit here. So it's, I'm cutting out quite a lot here because of the depth of the, you know, the, the belly of the hull. And as it comes forward, it uh, comes away to nothing. But that would leave me with a big fat piece at the front, which, you know, what do you do with that? Um, so the instructions say you, you should cut another, you should draw another line, 22 millimeters down from the top and draw this along. Um, and then it says, just scratch out that bit of line over the line you've just scribed, which is not very clear. Um, but looking at the diagram, it appears to mean that you use the, the scribed line on the rear section, because that leaves a, a full 40 millimeter hull piece at the tail. Uh, and then as you come forward, it drops down to what looks like about um, 18 millimeters, about here. And then as you come forward again, um, you don't want it to drop below 22. So that's the idea with cutting along this line. So then the forward section will still be just 22 and it'll, you'll have to bend it then to actually fit the hull. Um, so actually what happens is when it's in the water the hull will be flat from, uh, from the aft section but in the forward section it will actually be slightly rising which kind of makes sense if you're going to end up running up onto a beach um, you're not going to suddenly get a sudden thud when the, the keel hits um, even though it's tapered at the front you know, you still, you know it's, it's got to bend to it to the centre point which means it will be a much softer grounding um, on the keel. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to cut along that line. So this line here, so a 22 millimeter line. And then when I get to the point here, which is where the scribe line meets it, then I'm going to follow the scribe line. So this is now following the shape of the hull. So this section forward of here will bend slowly, slowly down and around the keel shape. So hopefully that's thin enough now to do that. Um, 
and then I'll screw it on. So, yes. And I'm pretty sure that's right because we've got a diagram here um, showing 22 millimeters from the top of the keel to a line. And that looks like the cut line. And then after that, after that meets the scribe line, it scribes to a big thick keel at the rear. So that seems to be the um, situation. Forward at this point, it's just a 22 millimeter block. This is the point where I'm gonna cut it in half because there's a forward enough section, it can't be a, a single keel. So actually what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna cut that in half first. It's gonna make it easy to work with. And then I can cut these sections out much easier. All right, let's see if I can get on with that. Okay, first job, cut the keel in half. And then I realize obviously that I can't jigsaw the keel because I don't have the stands. Um, and then I don't have the room, so with the dinghy actually joined together. So I thought I'd quickly knock up a template for the seat 